top five board games. This is going to be tough, like picking a favorite child. Top five Lego sets. Top five video games. Top five anime. Top five Supreme. Hey everyone, Rick here, and folks, welcome to my top five, top five. What does that mean? Well, it's my five favorite things to collect and my top five favorite things in each of those categories. So things are going to get a little wild here. Hold on. Here we go. Let's start this off with what I'm probably most known for on this channel, which is board games. How, let me just say this first, I have one thing to say to you, and that is, how dare you? How dare you make me choose a top five? Oh, this was my idea? All right, I'll take responsibility then. Shout outs first, honorable mentions. I, I have to do honorable mentions. Crown of Amara, one of my absolute favorite games of all time. Gizmos, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I can't even explain to you how much I love Crown of Amara and Gizmos. They're not, a, I don't want to say they're not in the top five. They're not in this top five. Tomorrow, who knows, it could be in my top five. Another honorable mention, which honestly, for the longest time, used to be my number one, but it's, I'm not going to include it in this list, and that is Agricola. The game that got me into the board game hobby. Still so much undying love for Agricola. But we're going with a different top five. Oh, how do I even do this? Let's start here with Warquest. Warquest is an, my favorite dudes on a map style game. You wander around collecting different kinds of warriors from all sorts of different fantasy races. They have their all their own strengths and weaknesses. You tax towns that you own to get money to recruit more soldiers. The battle system in this is insane. You enter a province with an opponent. You and your opponent take both of your armies... You have multiple armies going across the map, but you have that specific army you moved in there. You and your opponent take all the figures that are parts of that army, move them onto separate battle maps with front ranks, rear ranks, reserves. Archers are firing, melee combat, special abilities, and there's more. There's all sorts of expansions for it that add so many more races and stuff. And a fifth player. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love this one. I don't, I'm not even going to say this is my number five. I have no clue where this ranks in the top five, as I don't with any of these. Zaya, Sandbox, Space, Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, The Board Game. Are you kidding me? Bounty hunting, mining, buying and selling goods, outfitting your ship, Tetris style, with all sorts of different things the expansions for it add even more ships you upgrade your ship to various tiers i i can't stress to you how much i absolutely love this game sandbox in space escape the dark castle i know this one's pretty black but at least on the back it gives you some nice details check my channel i've done four playthroughs of this one of my absolute favorite games of all time. This is story driven. Dice, choose your own adventure in a box, role playing game. Who knows what the next chapter card you turn over is going to have you do. This can be played by anybody. And then, of course, they just recently came out with Escape the Dark Sector. Can't wait to play that one. What's next? Let's go with Kalimala. Oh my gosh, this was my favorite game of what, 2018? Holy cow. This game is absolutely amazing. One of my top five games ever of all time because of how fast it scores and how many different things you can score. This is area majority, area control to the 10th degree. 
I worker placement. Oh my gosh, I love worker placement. This is worker placement on overdrive. You can take an action someone else did, but everyone who took an action before you gets to take that action again. So do you really want to take that action? Because you're giving everyone else that opportunity. And then you got to check when are things going to score? Do you have enough majority in certain areas? Are you about to trigger a scoring? This game is absolutely amazing. And then last, but maybe my new number one of all time, but I don't know if I want to go that far. It has always been in the top five though. CO2. This is the heaviest, crunchiest game that I absolutely love. There is so much going on in this game. There are so many things you have to keep track of. For some reason, I love every second of it. You are making plans. I mean, this is about a theme that sure we should all care about globally, but you know, climate change and pollution, but in a board game, would that really strike me as something? Cause I'm all about sword and sorcery fantasy. And this is like modern environmentalist. What the mechanisms make this game for me when you God, I can't even think of how to put this into words. There's so much going on. You have to propose a project, implement it. You have, you send scientists off to summits. You have UN, United Nations goals you have to keep track of. All the while you have research you're conducting to get better in different areas. Oh my gosh, so much going on, but I absolutely love it. That's CO2. And I better stop there before I start going on about more honorable mentions because you can't, I can't choose just five. All right, that's board games. All right, folks, it is video game time. Couple caveats here, like I keep doing. I'm doing some honorable mentions and I am limiting myself to one PS1 RPG in my top five. Otherwise, my top five could have almost been nothing but PS1 RPGs. Here are the four honorable mentions. Wild Arms. One of the first games I can ever remember getting when I was a little kid. My very first JRPG. I still play this on my PSP today. 100% love Wild Arms. Legend of Dragoon. Still play this on my PSP today. Cannot get enough of the addition combat system. I am 100% turn-based fan. Action RPG is not my cup of tea, except in a second I'm about to contradict myself. <laughs> but for turn-based, adding that addition system... I am addicted to it. Still play this on my PSP, just like I still play Wild Arms 1 on my PSP. Final Fantasy 9, my absolute favorite Final Fantasy of all time. I know 7 fans may have some differing opinions, but 9. 9 is absolutely where it's at. Mega Man Legends. Are you kidding me? I honestly can't stand. I hope this isn't, uh, you know, bad, terrible to say or I'm breaking any laws or anything, but I can't stand the other Mega Man games, the side-scrolling kind of Mega Man games. Mega Man Legends. Are you kidding me? The 3D run around the world, upgrading your arm, all the baddies, just the graphical style of everything. Mega Man Legends. All right, those are my four PS1 honorable mentions. Let's do a couple other honorable mentions because I can't help myself. You know how many hours, days, weeks, months I have spent playing SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. This is by far my favorite pro wrestling video game of all time. I'm sorry, Kevin Big Sexy Nash. I would tear apart that campaign story mode with Kevin Nash. Jackknife, powerbomb him, big boot, everybody straight to hell. Dynasty Warriors 3. The crunch of your blade as it glides through 
so, <laughs> absolute hordes of opponents. There's nothing more satisfying. I loved the idea that Nine had with its open world. The satisfaction isn't quite the same. Dynasty Warriors 3 is still my favorite Dynasty Warriors. All right, now can we actually get into the actual top five? Burnout 3 Takedown. This soundtrack may be the greatest video game soundtrack of all time. There is nothing more satisfying than absolute tearing ass down the street, slamming cars off the road to the rock soundtrack that this game has. Absolutely love it. Grand Theft Auto V, specifically the PS3 version, folks, I honestly have barely touched. In all the years that I have had this game, I've barely touched the actual missions. I don't play online. I don't even really play the story missions. I just cause havoc. There's nothing like building a huge pile up on the highway, standing on a nearby hill and shooting a rocket right into it all. The screams, the explosions, that's what I live for. Trying to derail trains, I swear I had so much fun like stealing those gigantic construction trucks, parking it right in front of a train tunnel just to see how the two immovable objects would, you know, when that train smashed into that thing and it blew, oh my God, anyway, I love it. Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Siege was not the same. This is my favorite Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six Vegas 2. I beat the story mode pretty early on getting the game, but I put so many more hours, days, weeks into just playing the terrorist hunt missions. I'd play them over and over again. I got so addicted to the stealth, hide behind the corner, crouch down, Whip around the corner real fast. Get a headshot. Oh my god, it was so addicting. Absolutely love Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Skyrim. Skyrim! I play this game every, just about every day. To this day. And it's going to shock people that I don't play with any mods. Not a single mod. And I have never spent a cent in the creator center or whatever it's called. There were a couple times where they gave away free items in the creation hub or whatever it's called. So I did get a couple of those, a pet mud crab and a pet uh, Nyx hound. But apart from that, this is base Skyrim. And I have sunk so many, I have sunk so many days, weeks into this game. I have acquired every perk with a little help from the telekinesis <laughs> uh, secret glitch thing. Every perk, millions of gold, not a single mod. And I beat you know, every quest line, there's nothing left for me to do. I still play this game, wandering the world, clearing out a bandit cave for the 20th time. Can't get enough of Skyrim. My number one favorite video game of all time, Suikoden 2. I remember walking into a Comp USA back in the day, found this exact case on the shelf. Can you even, it seems like a different universe to have walked into a retail store and found a copy of Suikoden 2 on the shelf. I remember picking it up, holding it just like this. Over 108 different characters to join. You have to remember, I was playing Wild Arms back in the 90s at the time, found this. I was used to a three character party. This, six characters. I absolutely loved Wild Arms. This looked like Wild Arms on steroids to me. Over 108 different party characters, and I could have battle, turn based battles with up to six people. I was in. That was just the opening. This game is unprecedented. 
Folks, this game is insane. <laughs> I know you're like, Rick, God, just shut up with the adjectives. I'm sorry. There's a there's three different kinds of combat. Regular party combat, there's duels, and there's tactical map-based war game combat where you have several different commanders with their own troops moving around a square grid just like a board game. Oh my gosh, the storyline, the how your headquarters expands, all the mini games. There's an Iron Chef cooking mini game. All sorts of mini games, fishing games, gambling games. Oh my gosh, this game is unreal. Still play it to this day again on my PSP. I use this PSP all the damn time for PS1 Classic RPGs and Crash Bandicoot, the original, very first Crash Bandicoot. Play it all the time on my PSP. So we go into... Folks, right now, check Kickstarter. The original creators of Suikoden, Suikoden 2, and some of the other Suikoden games are coming up with a new game. It's not under the Suikoden title. It is something completely different. And if I was prepared, I would have the name of the game known already. I don't. It's on Kickstarter. I'll have a link in the description where you can go back it because it's going to be just like Suikoden. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, that is enough. Those are my five favorite video games, plus a few others. All right, folks, here we go. Time for top five Lego sets. I mean, my gosh, it would be hard enough for me to pick top five Lego themes, let alone sets. But hey, so you can clearly see Castle is, it is without a doubt, my number one favorite theme. But Pirate is up there as well. And let's start here for number five, and we're going to go with the Imperial Flagship. This set, when it came out, blew my mind. The biggest, and I think it is still the biggest, pirate ship that LEGO has ever produced. This thing is massive. Has the four cannon broadside, has an absolutely fantastic interior cabin. You can get below deck as well. Just the size in the interior of this ship makes it ideal for my top five. Where do we want to go next? Let's go with the Tower of Orthanc for my number four. This thing is massive. Now, I don't want, you know, there to be any rumors that I'm only picking my top five based on set size, because no, that's not the case. But I mean, how can you not absolutely love this? As far as, you know, for someone who absolutely loves Lord of the Rings, this set itself already was a must have, but then you have all these floors of detail all the way to the top. It was a joy to build and just absolutely looks fantastic on display. Number three. Oh my goodness, let's go over here. I know, can you <laughs> can you tell I really have not put too much... I mean, it's tough to rank these, right? I mean, I have so many fantastic experiences built. I still remember building this. Here's my number three. Message Intercept Base for the Blacktron Space Classic Space theme. This set is still probably my absolute favorite space station. Don't mind the dust on any of these. I mean, I spray them down with, as you can see, those air sprays, but it doesn't matter. As any Lego collector will tell you, dust is our worst enemy. There's so many moving parts here. Look at this. You can make this entire comm tower slide over there, clip this little landing piece there so now you can go through this tunnel over into this area or back the comms tower away got a little station up there and then even if you want access to this tunnel you can get in that way you can also get in this back way as well if you want to have access you know for playability just the fact that there is kind of a hallway makes this such an amazing set and then here we go Boom, time to launch the little shuttle that's included that has its own moving parts and features as well. God, I'm just unbelievable amounts of dust in here. 
but you can see the little computer stations, weapons racks, little spots for people. Even up there, you can get someone. I just love anywhere where there's like mini, you can just see the life in the set. Oh God, I'm like destroying it. Anytime you can see like how this would all work would is one of the major reasons why I absolutely love it. All right, number two, let's go with the Black Knight's Castle. I took this down off the shelf anyway, just to show how gorgeous this looks. Like, are you kidding me? This thing looks so good. I Medieval, obviously, from my kind of like gaming likes, Medieval fantasy has always been my favorite kind of theme in gaming. So with Lego, that's the same thing. And they did such a fantastic job, you know, Black Monarch's Castle to the Black Knight's Castle. Just all the features they did. They did the raised base plate on this one. And again, so much dust. I love, but what knocks this out of the park for me was this little, um, living quarters had that they actually included some Tudor walls have a, a little living quarters area with a little table and goblet in there and then all the interior features there's a well in here plenty of space on the ramparts areas to get up and down off of the ramparts absolutely love it it looks fantastic and that's why it's my number two so what's my number one Number one, I mean, how can I pick one? It is the Modular Buildings series. And this is unfortunately not even all of them. I still have some boxed up uh, because I've ran out of space up here and I haven't had much time to build. But I mean, are you kidding me? I know it's cheating to say that this whole theme is my favorite, but I mean... If I absolutely had to pick one of these, it would probably be the pool hall one because I love how it looks. You have the barber shop, you have the pool hall, you have upstairs apartments. I just love just all the details about it. I mean, you even, you can't neglect the original cafe corner or even the market street one, which I love. Um, but no, absolutely love this series in general. Now there would have been another set. I don't know where it would have ranked in the top five. It is the medieval marketplace. And unfortunately it is buried somewhere in my guest bedroom, somewhere in one of these boxes and right now I have no clue where it is. I'm still going through all this years later. Hopefully, though, we will get it all sorted out. But I wanted to give a shout out to that one because, again, that was something unexpected. Because Lego is typically about conflict, action, you know, for kids to draw them in, to play with the sets. And the Medieval Market Village set was all about civilian life. I think they did throw in some bad guys, but the set itself was a couple of old school medieval buildings. And that just blew me away that they actually did that. So absolutely love it. All right, folks, that was my top five Lego sets. All right, folks, I should have known someone like me who can't make up what to have for dinner was going to have a hard time picking their favorite anime. All right, I do want to, I really did not want to do honorable mentions because I feel like that's cheating, but I have a stack of honorable mentions. I don't care. Vampire Hunter D, love the old school art style here. Just an absolute classic. Anyone who's seen it knows. Akira, of course. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that they actually collabed with Supreme. I do have some of that merchandise too. Uh, when that came out, that was freaking awesome. But Akira, obviously, old school, fantastic, cyberpunk kind of. It is just fantastic. Love it. Ninja Scroll, bloody gore. The combat, again, classic. Love it. And then just from when I was young, when I was first getting into anime, the dot hack 
series, but specifically the original sign. Absolutely loved everything about it. Some of the English dub was kind of bizarre sounding at times, as many dubs are, but that didn't stop me from thoroughly enjoying the idea that someone could get trapped in an MMORPG. <laughs> All right, and then for the actual top five, Soul Taker. Folks, have you ever seen Soul Taker? I think I first saw it on Anime Unleashed on G4 Tech TV back in the day. This one, the art style is so bizarre and it is so creepy. Oh my gosh. Love the combat. Love the just everything about it. That's my number five, Soul Taker. Next up, I mean, I'm going with a classic. There's been a lot of mobile suits. Uh, you know, anime, but Gundam Wing, specifically Wing. This was the original for me, and I loved everything about it. Uh, I love just the villains. I love the storyline. Zex is still probably my favorite character in any anime ever. Love the tall geese. Oh my god. Could watch it over and over and over, as I could with any of these. Next up... Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh my gosh, this was another one of my firsts. And the entire series, even when the art style shifted toward the end of the Dark Tournament. I mean, the Dark Tournament itself is one of my favorite storylines in any anime. But even when they switched the art style, that didn't stop me from watching it. Though I prefer the original art style uh, pre-Dark Tournament. But yeah... Fantastic combat, storyline, character progression. Love the villains in this one. Oh, absolutely love Yu Yu Hakusho. Okay, this was tough for me to choose a top two. And honestly, depending on my mood, these could always swap around. Serial Experiments Lane. This is a head trip, folks. This will make you think. This will make you want to turn off the TV, run to your room, Put your head in a cold shower because this is so crazy. Decades later, I'm still trying to wrap my head around exactly what's going on here. And that's why I love it so much. It is so bizarre, so mysterious. Love Serial Experiments Lane. And then number one, oh my gosh, I had to go with Cowboy Bebop, the classic you turn this on, I am plopping myself down and watching till the credits roll because I can't get enough of the universe, of the characters, of the storyline, the dialogue, everything about it, the dub actors. Oh my gosh, everything about Cowboy Bebop screams anime, screams just everything I love about entertainment. And so that is why Cowboy Bebop gets my number one. And that is my top, <laughs> whoops, supposed to be five anime. All right, folks, and this one's taking us into the bedroom. That's right. Number five, top five is Supreme. Now, some of you may know that I collect this. Others may not. Admittedly, not for very long, about the past four or five years. But those Thursday morning drops, oh my gosh, the adrenaline starts pumping. It's up. It's just fun to collect. So here are the items, which were, was pretty tough for me to choose on this category also, but I went with a few of my favorites. The sailboat tee. Let's start here. Number five, the sailboat tee. It just looks so clean and friendly. I went with the white colorway because I just think the colors on that really pop. It is just one of my favorite designs. I don't even know what order to go in. I do want to shout out an honorable mention, this zebra striped jacket. This takes some confidence to wear and pull off, but oh my gosh, I just freaking love it. Anything loud and crazy like this? All right, so that's my honorable mention. Next, let's go with the CDG collab in general. I couldn't pick between the Air Force Ones and the hoodie. They split the box logo, reversed it. It is just fantastic. Has the CDG on the back. It's just 
so nice in this and it's not quite a white it's like an off-white if you can kind of see there it's kind of more of a cream i just absolutely love it they did the same kind of split thing with the air force ones with the nike logo split and then again their logo there and on the box freaking love that Next up, let's go with the Miles Davis. This one was so overlooked, so slept on. I couldn't believe it when I saw how funky this looked. Again, loud, crazy, absolutely love it. And just as crazy on the back also with that kind of cheetah print and Supreme across the back. Freaking love it. All right, next up, oh yeah, the Levi denim snake skin pattern jacket this thing has been my go-to in falls and winters the past couple years number one it goes over a hoodie fantastically number two it itself is really warm with this flannel interior absolutely love it you can even see supreme on all the buttons it is gorgeous but Number one has to be this absolute gem in my collection, the Supreme B.B. Simon belt. Oh my gosh. Hopefully in this lighting, you can even see some of the colors of the crystals used in this. It is fantastic. Came, of course, with its beautiful tin right there in the old us of a so folks that is my top five supreme all right folks now i'm not gonna lie that was a pain to record i'm sorry for all the honorable mentions it was just too hard to make some very tough choices but i hope some of you found it interesting i'd love to do more of these so if you have any other topics for top fives you're interested in Leave them in the comments below. I'll either compile them for a future video or maybe just answer you directly right in the comments. So let me know. But as always, thank you so much for watching and until next time.